Hey guys, this is God of Politics, and before we get started, please like this video and subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, and follow me on Twitter. I have all of those linked into the description, but most importantly, please, please subscribe to the channel and show your support. But today, the video is going to be the best case scenario for Donald Trump and the Republicans in the 2020 election that's coming up. Now, I'm going to be doing the best case scenario in the in the presidential election, as well as in the Senate election, as well as in the House election. I'm just going to be going through the entire thing and seeing, um, you know, how I think everything is going to go, if it is a best-case scenario for the Republicans. Now, this would most likely be if we have a complete economic recovery from this crisis and Trump comes out stronger than ever and the Democrats shoot themselves in the foot, maybe Joe Biden has a poor debate performance, something like that. But this is going to be worst-case scenario for the Democrats and best-case scenario for the GOP and the Republicans. We'll first start with the presidential election, and as always, you will start off by filling in the safe states for Donald Trump in the Republicans, North Dakota, South Dakota, all of Nebraska, not the second district still, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, South Carolina, Ohio, and Maine's second district are all going to be safe margins for Donald Trump and then for Joe Biden and the Democrats. He would still win California. Washington, Illinois, Hawaii, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C., Houston, and all of those states. So that puts uh, Joe Biden at 175 safe electoral votes and Donald Trump at 188 safe electoral votes. Now we'll do the likely and still states. First off, in the Northeast, I think Maine's first district would go a likely, which means that Maine at large would go tilt towards Donald Trump, which would be a huge result as well. I also think that New Hampshire, in a best-case scenario, would flip to Donald Trump. It almost flipped in 2016, and I think with the right candidate in Joe Biden for Donald Trump, he can win the city of New Hampshire. Joe Biden didn't do very well in New Hampshire and in the primary. And if Donald Trump has a strong economy, he has a lot of other things to his name. He could use that to his advantage in a state like New Hampshire. In Virginia, Virginia would still go by a lean margin regardless. The trends that we've seen in this state are just not to be underestimated. They are trending towards Democrats, especially establishment Democrats like Joe Biden. And so Donald Trump would still not be able to win the state, even if it's a best-case scenario. North Carolina would be a likely margin in, in 2016. It was a five-point victory for Donald Trump. You might see around a six-point victory, not too much more than that because it is, you could argue, a trending state. They do have a Democratic governor, and they might have a Democratic senator, but we'll see about that not in this scenario, though. But in the best-case scenario, North Carolina will go likely. I believe Georgia will go likely as well. It is a trending state, and it could go right around seven or eight, which is what it went by last time. And so that's probably the result that you'd see if it was the best-case scenario. Florida would be a lean margin. People are saying it's going to go by a likely margin. or just ridiculous. This is still Florida. It is still going to be close. But in a best-case scenario, I can see it going by around three to three and a half points. I can't really see it going by much more than that just because it is still such a close state. It's been close pretty much every election. All the elections come down to this, whether you like it or not. And in a best-case scenario, Florida would be a lean margin for Donald Trump. New Mexico would be a lean margin for Joe Biden, and Colorado would also be a lean margin. <clears throat> These states are trending towards the blue column, and that's not to be underestimated. We saw in 2014 Republicans were able to win here with Cory Gardner, and as you'll see in a second, I do not think Republicans are going to be able to win in these two states for very much longer. Even with Donald Trump having a best-case scenario here, I don't think that he'd be able to to rally enough voters in these states to bring up the trends that we saw in the wave year of 2014 uh, but yeah, Arizona would be a lean margin best case scenario, probably around a similar result to what it was last time. It's not going to be any larger of a margin than what it was last time, even in the Donald Trump's best case scenario. But it will be around the same margin that it was last time by about just under four points here. And I think that's a result that you could see again if Donald Trump does have a strong economy that he recovers from. And that is the margin you will see probably by around three to three and a half points. Nevada will also be a tilt margin for Donald Trump now, pushing him over 270 electoral votes, and we're not even at the Rust Belt yet. Um, but this is a state that, again, Joe Biden didn't do very well in the primary here, and if you see low Latino turnout, low Bernie bro turnout, just due to the fact that there's a lot of enthusiasm amongst Donald Trump, that could hurt Joe Biden. That could actually give Donald Trump a victory in the state of Nevada, which we haven't seen in a very long time. 
Uh, Oregon would still go by like Lake Margin. It's just a very left-wing state. You have a lot of voters that might not want to turn out for, for Joe Biden. So she, uh, you might even have some that go over to Donald Trump from Joe Biden voters. Uh, Nebraska's second district would go by a likely margin, probably by around five to six. We went by two last time, so I think it would be a bit larger margin than that. Then we will go to Pennsylvania. I think that Pennsylvania would be by a lean margin in a best-case scenario for Donald Trump. This would mean that he wins by about two to three points. I think that's actually a realistic scenario. If he has a good economy, it's probably might what you might have seen before all of this coronavirus stuff. But if he is able to recover, I think that's a result that you might actually see. Uh, Michigan would also be a lean margin. I mean, lean tilt margins, I'm hesitant to give because it is less than a point. And I do believe that Donald Trump would be able to win over some voters that he wasn't able to get last time if there was a very strong economy and he had some accomplishments that could, he could cater to the state of Michigan, that he could win it by a lean margin. But it is on the cusp of lean until just over one point in this scenario. I would assume same thing with Wisconsin. It would also be by a lean margin if he has a good economy and he recovers coming into this. And Minnesota actually would be a tilt margin as well. That would be probably the biggest upset of the night. Um, and that would put overall Donald Trump at 328 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 210 electoral votes. That is the best case scenario in terms of the presidential election. Now, if we go over to the Senate election here, we'll be doing the best case scenario for the Republicans in the Senate. So first, we'll start off with uh, the safe states, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Texas, Alaska, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama could be safe, Georgia could be safe. South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, uh, those could all be safe margins. And for the Democrats, they would still win Oregon by safe margin. They would win, oh, also Oklahoma would be by safe margin. For the Republicans, Oregon by safe margin, Illinois by safe margin, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, and that will be all for the safe margins. And then the likely lean and tilt states. Montana would be a likely state just because Steve Bullock's running. Uh, same thing with Kansas, just because Chris Kobach with the nominee uh, is the nominee that could make it closer. Joni Ernst would make it a likely margin. She's not too popular, but it is Iowa, and she'd still win it by a likely margin. And then New Mexico would go by a likely margin for the Democrats, as well as Virginia going by a likely margin. Mark Warner is pretty popular there, and you have an open seat in New Mexico, but it is a blue state, so I'm pro pretty confident that even in the best case scenario for Donald Trump, Democrats would still win in this state. And then likely margin, also Georgia's special election that could overcome the trends, the Republicans in this state, and win the state by a likely margin. Uh, getting into the lean states, I believe that New Hampshire would still go lean as well as Minnesota still going lean. I don't believe these states have really any chance of flipping to the Republican column, although they could be a bit closer than they were last time. Actually, we'll put we'll put New Hampshire in a tilt margin just because if the Republicans can get a good nominee and rile them up uh, with the state going red, I think that the Senate election could possibly go red as well, but I'll put it at a tilt margin for now, as well as North Carolina going lean red. Tom Tillis isn't very popular, but I still think that he could win. Colorado would go by a tilt margin. Even in a Vesky scenario, Cory Gardner is not going to win. Colorado is just not the same as it was when he was elected. And Arizona could possibly go by tilt margin to Martha McSally. I think that if there is a very good economy, maybe Mark Kelly doesn't run too good of a campaign. Uh, Martha McSally could get a victory. Uh, I think it's unlikely, but if it is a best case scenario, I believe that she would win. Same thing in Michigan with John James. John James could pull off a victory in the state of Michigan. If he's win if Donald Trump's winning Michigan by a lean margin, I believe that John James could get enough votes to win Michigan by a tilt margin, and that would also be a very monumental result. Same thing with Maine. Maine would be a lean margin. It is going to be close. You have Sarah Gideon running a good campaign so far, but it could be – uh, a good, pretty comfortable victory for Susan Collins if you have a best case scenario for them. And that overall puts the Republicans at 54 seats to the Democrats' 46 seats with a net gain of one for the Republicans, winning in Alabama, winning in Michigan, but losing in Colorado while narrowly retaining the seat of Arizona and narrowly winning the seat in, in Michigan. So now they've got the presidential election victory of 328 to 210 electoral votes and the Senate election with 54 seats to the Democrats, 46 seats. So now we will go into the House election, just go down the list, see uh, who I think, how I think that it is going to flip, how, how I think each district is going to go. 
I'll just flip these as we go along here. I do think that T.J. Cox is going to lose his seat in the best case scenario. You see the Republican candidate with about 15% of other Republican vote. He still was able to get 53% of the vote. T.J. Cox only got about 36%. And you could say, oh, that's low turnout amongst Democrats, amongst young voters, whatever. But still, getting only 36% of the vote in the primary, the jungle primary, how California does it, is not a good sign. And because of that, he would lose his seat. All the other California seats, I think, will stay the same, though. All of the Florida seats, I also think, would stay the same. But the Georgia 6th seat would lose to Macbeth. A lot of people do not like her, and it is still a Trump district. And they, the Republicans could overcome the trend and win the seat in Georgia 6th, as well as all, uh, as well as obviously Georgia 7th, as well as all of the Iowa districts could flip towards the Republicans. They all are Trump districts, and they all are either a long-term Democrat with David Lobsack, who is retiring, or freshman Democrats in Abby Finkenauer and Sidney Axie. And that's going to be an interesting result if all three of those seats flip. But I think that it is a real possibility. They are all Trump districts, and Trump could win it by a similar margin that he did last time, too. Um, the next seat that I think will flip will be uh, Illinois 13th. We'll say the same. Illinois 14th could flip. It is a plus four Trump district, and I think that you know if you have a high turnout in a state like Illinois, because there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm among Trump voters, they could overcome the five point victory Lauren Underwood got when there was low turnout amongst GOP Republicans, and I think that Illinois 14th could possibly flip in a best case scenario. The next seat that I think will flip all of these will say the same in my opinion. Maine's second, I think, could flip by a likely margin. Uh, it's not a very good place for Democrats. The ranked choice voting could help him a little bit, but he is going to lose Jerry Golden by a pretty substantial margin in a best-case scenario. Even in a good scenario for Democrats, you think that he still could easily lose his seat. So, uh, Justin Mash will retain his seat, assuming he wins the primary. Uh... Keep going down the list here. All these seats will say the same. Minnesota 7th will also stay. There's a long-term Democrat in Colin Peterson. Uh, the next seat that I think will flip will be Chris Pappas' seat. He did win by 8.5 percentage points. But, you know, it is still a Trump district. I assumed that the Senate election would be very close and Donald Trump would be able to pull it off in the presidential election. That means that Joe Biden would have to really underperform. A lot of the establishment Democrats would have to really underperform and a lot of those voters would have to go over to the Republican column. And you can see that resonates in the House rates as well. When people go to the Republican district, the Republican candidate and turn this district to the red column. The next seat I think that will flip will be Andy Kim's seat. This is another district where Democrats were really lucky to win in the first place. I think even a good scenario, Democrats could still lose this, but definitely in a bad scenario for the Democrats, they would lose this. Same thing with uh, Showtill Torres Small. She'll be dead on arrival in this situation. She'll lose her seat. Same thing with Max Rose. He'll almost be dead on arrival, but I put it a lean margin just because he was able to win by 6% in 2018, and he would probably get a decent result, but he'd still end up losing in this situation. Uh, I think that Antonin, Antonio Delgado would also lose his seat. It is a plus seven Trump district, and you'd see more excitement and turnout amongst voters in a normally safe blue state. Same thing in New York 22nd. He will be Anthony Bernice. You will be dead on arrival. Uh, the next seat, Kendra Horn, she'll be dead on arrival as well. She'll lose her seat. Uh, Pennsylvania 8th, Matthew Carvide will stay the same. He did win by 9 points, and he's been there for a while. Scott Perry will retain his district, likely margin. Joe Cunningham, he will also be there on arrival. He'll lose his seat by a pretty substantial margin. South Carolina is not the place for him. Texas 22nd will stay the same. I am. I do think that Texas is 23rd would stay. Uh, would, would flip to the Democrats column, even in a best-case scenario. It is a 3.4%. Uh, Democratic district in the state that is trending, but Texas is 24th would stay the same. Ben McAdams, he'd also be done on arrival. Utah, Donald Trump missed a lot of vote because of Evan McGowan. He'd get that vote back this time. Uh, Abigail Spanberger, she'd also lose. She's not very popular there. And yet, that is it. So looking at the overall picture of this, we see that the Democrats are at 220 seats, which is still a majority, to the Republicans, 215 seats. I gave a lot of seats to the Republicans. Don't call me biased because of this. I gave a lot of leeway for Republicans to win a lot of districts in 
districts they lost in 20, in 2018 that they won in 2016. And this is going to be an important result because if the Republicans gain in the Senate, gain in the presidential election, but narrowly lose the House, it is going to be a substantial, uh, you know, it'll be a hurdle for them getting things done without a Democratic House. And that is something that they'll have to work on. But even in a best case scenario, I think the Democrats are still poised to keep the House by a margin of 220 to 215. Tomorrow I will do my best case scenario for the Democrats just for people who do not like this video. Tomorrow I will have the opposite, the best case scenario for the Democrats. Maybe if the economy doesn't recover, if Trump's approved, rating goes down. But this is the best case scenario for Donald Trump and the Republicans. If Donald Trump is able to get a good result out of this economy and out of the coronavirus, if he can recover, his approval ratings can continue to go up. But yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys later.